Hello and welcome once more to RMTV, the online station that brings you the news from your union wherever you are. We're joined today by the union's general secretary, Bob Crow, to discuss news that the union's informal merger talks with TSSA, the Transport Salaried Staffs Association. I began by asking Bob what significance a merger would have for the industry and the people who work in it. Well, it's a big significance, really. I mean, that getting too historical. I mean, the rea reality is that uh, the RMT and formerly the NUR uh, have always striven to have uh, one railway union. Our union obviously goes beyond railways, uh, seafaring, buses and road freight and offshore. Uh, but basically, all the unions that are always combined to be RMT have all been industrial unions, e.g. all the grades in one industry uh, should come together because we believe we're stronger and all the grades come together to take on the employer or if the employer tries to take on us. Uh, so this is a significant move. I mean, both unions have been around for over 100 years. They've got traditions in representing people at every level uh, of the industry. And this gives an opportunity of the one and only reason there should be a merger. Does it strengthen workers at the shop floor? It's not about uh, what size office we've got, or what cars we get, or what pay and conditions we get. This is about, does a worker have more strength at the workplace? And the answer's got to be yes because we overlap with each other, why spending our efforts saying that Tessa are better than RMT and RMT is better than Tessa, when we can combine together and do what we should be doing, and that's trying to secure the best possible paying conditions and the health and safety of our members at the workplace. I suppose one way of measuring how effective a merger might be is the reaction of uh, some of the right-wing newspapers, yep. which of course have uh, reacted well, with fury, really, and uh, tried to paint it as some kind of RMT uh, takeover. Um, how would you respond to that? Well, number one, it's not an RMT takeover. Uh, it's got to be a merger. Uh, it won't be the RMT. It'll be a new union. Uh, and the TSSA membership will have a vote. And so will our own membership have a vote. And if the TSSA don't believe they're getting a good deal, they will vote no. So it's not a takeover. And secondly, I'm glad that the right-wing press uh, are in fury. Because it must be that we're doing something right. Uh, if they were turned around, that was a good thing. Uh, I mean, one uh, critic said, will be giving less choice to people for what union they can join. But it takes some uh, uh, sting out the tail that does when you've got to merge two parties of Liberals and Conservatives to come together as a coalition and don't give the people the opportunity about what parties they want. They've got the cheek to come and tell us what we want. Now, I don't mind a Tessa member saying that or an IMT member saying that, but the only people that should have a say uh, should be Tessa or IMT members. What's it got to do with anyone else outside our organisation? So, Bob, what's the process? What's going to happen? Well, the process has been now is that uh, it's gone through the TSSA conference, uh, that they should have formal talks, not just with RMT, uh, but other like-minded unions as well. And we believe this could form the part of other unions coming on board. I would love to see Asleff on board, Nautilus, uh, the Union for Road Transport Operators, uh, Erto, they come on board as well. Specialist transport unions that can come together, not on the basis that we're running out of money, because both unions are not, or that we need to uh, bring our resources together, because we don't need to do that, but about strengthening people at the workplace. What happened there is that uh, our conference two years ago, and our rule book uh, for decades, says that we should seek mergers in, within the transport industry. So what happened is there will be a small group uh, of people that will come together, both from the RMT and TSSA side, look at heads of agreement, sit down, look about their traditions, our traditions, their democracy, our democracy, uh, and how best we can blend those together and hopefully reach some kind of tentative position that we can put to our executive bodies respectively on both unions and ultimately we'll have to go to either a special general meeting or an annual general meeting and ultimately the final arbiters will be the membership in a secret ballot if they want a new union or not. And in the meantime, the two unions will continue to work, as they have been quite well recently, uh, working very closely together. Yes, we've been working very closely together, and I think, you know, both on network rail side, over the pension issue, that we work closely with Tessa, and Tessa worked closely with us, uh, over the other underground uh, station job losses, where we both work together well, uh, politically, um, in campaigning against uh, McNulty. All those issues have laid the foundation down that is there really a requirement to have, you know, more than one union in the railway industry. To give you an example, in 1947 when the railways were first nationalised, the London North Wales and West Railway, which is basically the Virgin West Coast Railway, up to the border, had 102,000 people working for them. There's less than 100,000 people now in the railway industry. 
and there's three stroke four unions scratching their eyes out uh, for membership where we should be combining our resources together and confronting what the real issue is out there, the employer that wants to cut our pay and cut our conditions. Well, you've just mentioned McNulty, which you already said is uh, the biggest challenge facing us, at least since uh, Beachy, if not uh, before. I suppose that underlines really the necessity for having one fighting industrial union in the industry. Oh, without a doubt, I mean, McNulty um, has made it quite clear uh, that Ease Railway is one of uh, turn up the station uh, with 74% of ticket offices being closed and the other 26% only open part time. No catering staff on the platforms no catering staff on the trains, no guards on the trains, one driver moving 12 carriages, which will be sunk in a region of 1,000 people, which will mean 30% more than what the new Airbus operates uh, between uh, London and Australia. And they've got about 45 staff looking after 738, and we've got one person looking after 1,000. Uh, farming out work to subcontractors on the infrastructure side, uh, Turn around and say that railway workers shouldn't have pay rises above the rate of inflation. Uh, and at the same time, he took over £200,000 himself to write a report out. And on top of that, he gets money for turning up at the Olympic Delivery uh, Authority. So nice work if you can get it, uh, but uh, I don't see the reason why railway workers should be penalised. And this gives a golden opportunity, the merger, for both unions to come together and say, we're opposed to McNulty, and you're taking on a united force. Absolutely. And finally, Bob, uh, time scales. There's no time scale being laid down. No, there's no time scales, Dan. I mean, we're going to have the first initial meeting next Friday. That's Friday week. That's the lay heads of agreement down. Then there will be a process where we'll be putting that back to the executive committee and giving regular updates to branches and activists uh, as a transparent process. And at the end of the day, we've got to bring the membership with us. Uh, this can't be seen as a, a takeover by one side or the other. Uh, this has got to be seen that the members believe this is going to benefit their ability to obtain better paying conditions and secure their health and safety at the workplace. Fantastic. Thanks very much. Paul. Thank you.